At Metropolitan Community College, we believe in and often say diversity matters. And as part of that, the college recognizes LGBTQ Pride Month by welcoming a variety of speakers to the college. One of those individuals is recording artist Tony Enos, who has become one of the most influential out pop performers in the world today. Tony is involved in issues like two-spirit reclamation, LGBTQ and youth rights, HIV AIDS awareness, and domestic violence awareness. I'm Kent Pavelka, your host, and coming up next, you'll meet Tony Enos on Metro and more. Greetings from the set of Metro and More at Metropolitan Community College, serving more than 50,000 students with over 120 programs at our eight locations in the daytime, evening, weekends, or online. We are back in the studio with our guest, Tony Enos, here to share his story. Pleasure, thank you. Very nice to have you and, and on campus for what you did here at the college. Yes, sir. Let's dig into you a little bit okay. to start. All right. Give us, uh, let, let's start at the beginning. You, uh, I think you were born in um, Philadelphia. Born, bred, and raised in Philadelphia, yes, sir. When? In and, and, uh, uh, 1984, so I'll be 33 this year, this right. July, next month, next July 30th. Month. Um, and uh, went to school in Philly, grew up in Philly, uh, and then moved to New York two years ago. What, where'd you go in between? Uh, everywhere. <laughs> we did a, <laughs> uh, I've been blessed enough to, uh, I released two albums and I toured nationally with the second one. It's called The Heat. Um, and that was you know, amazing, an amazing blessing. Um, but still was based in Philly. Um, I have a, an independent label, Lil T Entertainment LLC, that's based in Philly as well. Um, so I'm a Philly boy, still a Philly boy, uh, and then eventually moved to New York yeah. uh, two years ago. And you do and are about a lot of different things, as we alluded to in the open. Yeah. Um, <laughs> your father's part Cherokee. Yes. So, um, and then and then you came out as gay to your family yeah. at, at 11 years old. Is that yes, right? Yes, sir. So, fill us in. How did uh, what? Uh, from the beginning, how did how did your wa life develop into where you are today? I think I always knew from you know, from two years old. I just had an innate sense of uh, sexuality, my sexuality, the sexuality of others. Just this heightened awareness. I don't know where it came from, but just always had an awareness that I was different. And then by eleven, I you know I just I knew what it was. Uh, I already under undergone some bullying for it. And, uh, and uh, you know, I just figured, why, why belabor this, in a sense? And I came out to my parents. And my mother, who's always been an incredible uh, person in my life, influence, you know, she's the smartest person I know. And uh, she, you know, she, she said, okay, and these are my concerns. And we had a conversation about it. And my dad, uh, it didn't go so hot. And, you know, it took, it took a long time for us to work um, things out so to speak and we're still on the men and, and that's okay you know I'm okay with that I think we're at a point where we both uh, we know this is what we can give to each other so instead of kind of living in, in the past we live in the now and this is what you can give me as a dad and this is what I can give as a son and and we're okay with that so so you are uh, your 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 career mm -hmm. as, as a music uh, as a performer yes, sir is about a lot of different things. It's yeah. pop music, it's about your, uh, your, uh, your, you being gay, it's about uh, you being part Cherokee. Put all that together for us. Uh, I guess it's just me. <laughs> I, get, I, I, I feel like uh, I'm a very purpose-driven person, and even when not so good things, I hate to, see, I hate to say bad things happen, because I believe in all things in divine order, but um, when, when things happen, maybe not as I, had planned they would, I tried to find the purpose or, or the why. And so I, I'm a very much a, a purpose-driven person and I try and walk in my purpose and, and I think I have experienced all these things so that I can um, reach out to others who maybe feel or are experiencing more isolation than I am or more trauma than I am and say, hey, you know, everything is going to be all right and this too shall pass and it, and it really does get better you know i hate to sound like a bumper sticker but you know <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's it, true it, right? it, yeah I, I like to think so yeah. so you did two performances here or two appearances here at the yes, college sir. you did a, a lecture yes sir and then a performance yes, tell sir. us tell us about each so the uh the performance was uh an, an earlier 
showing, so to speak. And it just involved um, more music, some dance, traditional uh, dance, uh, men's southern traditionals, as we call it. Um, and then some of my pop music, um, a song I have called Heal You World. Um, and then another song that I wrote for the Two Spirit movement called Two Spirit um, at the end. We showed the video and uh, everyone was just really wonderful. We were blessed with a really good group. And then later in the evening, it was just lecture style. Um, and uh, more or less uh, along the lines of a PowerPoint. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a little more contained. We have a, a, a short video. Set this up for us. So we'll show our viewers. Uh, so next year, Knockwood, I'm uh, entering my 10th year in show business in the music industry. Um, and so you just always have to do like, uh, we call it a reel uh, for people to see what's going on, what's new, and, and how to keep in contact with you. So that's basically all this okay. is. It's just a new reel. Okay, let's take a look. Tony Enos. Very nice. Well, thank you. Uh, folks can see that. Now, you have a website, right? Yes, sir. And we, I think we just saw the, the address. TonyEnosMusic.com, yeah. and, and they could see that uh, minute and a half of carrying on. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, the other the videos. That and you have the, the, the five-minute the song. Uh, which, which song is that again? That uh, Two Spirit. Yeah, Two Spirit, yeah, and I, which I want to talk about sure. now. Sure. But I did want to ask you. How long does it take to do a video like that? It depends. That one, we, we shot that at a Two-Spirit gathering, so we really only had two days. And it was pretty loose and just go with the, Some videos you have more uh, elaborate concepts for, and things take more time. Um, if you do uh, green screen videos, that's a lot of lighting and resetting that constantly. Those, are, those can go really long and, and can take a few days. Um, that video took, I think, two days. Two days, yeah. and then the editing after that, right? The editing, yeah, yeah which was like a, probably another two days. Yeah. So total, I guess, about four days, so to speak, work on that. But I've done videos that are like weeks of carrying on. Sure. <laughs> Tony, what, what is Two-Spirit Native Culture? Uh, maybe maybe we could start by saying what it's not. It's not necessarily about being gay, because right. you, you, you say there's some misconceptions. There's eight misconceptions about yeah. Two-Spirit native culture what is it yeah i think um i guess the common misconception or one of anyway uh you know being two spirit it two spirit is a pan indian term that was coined in uh 1990 in winnipeg as a means to unite all these different two spirit individuals so every tribe across turtle island the states what we call turtle island uh had a name in their tribal language for their gender fluid gender queer gender non-conforming people um, the, uh, the Lakota have the Wink Day, the Navajo have the, the Nudle. So uh, to unite all these different individuals, that's, uh, that's what they coined the term Two-Spirit for. Um, and so it's a role that existed in a tribe for these, uh, again, gender fluid, gender queer, gender non-conforming people. And rather than a hard LGBT or Q, it, I think it really speaks to the um, the sort of the scale, the spectrum of 
gender expression, uh, gender, expression um, gender identity, and, and that sort of thing. What's the history of Two-Spirit in Indian culture? So, I mean, very much that. Before colonization, um, in every tribe, this was a role that existed for, again, these gender fluid, um, gender queer, gender nonconforming people. Um, in some tribes, they, uh, they, they pick names for the children. Um, they, uh, I, I like to say we were balance keepers. So if the male, if the morning is male, if the evening is female, two-spirit people are at the dusk, sort of that in between. Um, and we were balance keepers in this tribal social structure, so to speak. And so that may have looked a lot of different ways. Um, some uh, two-spirit individuals would pick name for the children. Um, we possessed certain medicines, but there was always a certain belief that we were blessed to see life through the lens of two genders, of both genders. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the, the point you make on your website yeah. is that um, it's an expression of an individual having uh, clear insight into both genders. Right. And, almost and, being both genders in a sense. Right, right. Uh, and there's a responsibility to that role. And so that's why we, that's why we sort of differentiate between two-spirit and gay. Being gay, there's not necessarily a role or responsibility gotcha. to being two-spirit. There's a role and responsibility to walk the red road, as we say, or serve our youth and our elders in a good way, you know, with a good mind, a good heart, and good intentions, um, trying to foster healing where we can. So there's definitely a, a responsibility. This is a really, really interesting educational point because I doubt a lot of people, first of all, even thought about, you know, was this phenomenon, uh, was this part of the culture of, of Native, Amer Native Americans? Right. And then I'm, what I'm reading into, and you correct me if I'm wrong, is that two-spirit individuals were accepted yeah. in the culture, correct? They, we had a role. Um, I mean, again, there was no pejorative, it wasn't pejorative to be right. two-spirit. Right, we, we were, we have, as we say, we had a, a place in the sacred hoop or the sacred circle of life. Um, and, you know, we just finished uh, the Gay Pride in, in New York and the New York Pride Parade, and we always say for us, it's a march. Until two spirits are accepted back in the circle and that sacred, that sacred hoop of life, it will always be a march. And until we are accepted back, that hoop will always be broken because there was a place there before, um, before colonization, uh, the influences of Western religion. Um, so we, we did hold uh, a tribal, uh, if you want to say function, or but there was a place for us specifically. Talk more about that. What was that role, or what were those roles that maybe only two-spirit people could fill? Right. Again, it, it varied from tribe to tribe. Um, uh, in some tribes, again, we would, we would pick the names for the children. Uh, some tribes, if a uh, warrior was lost in battle, the two-spirit would marry the standing partner. Um, we were the only ones allowed to go between the men's and women's camps. Um, a lot of tribes counseled with the two-spirit individuals before going to war. Um, I've heard it said, you know, they, they said we didn't go to war until the two-spirits said go to war. <laughs> really? But um, so th again, it, there was a, a, a function, you know, a role to be played by, um, by these individuals, our ancestors, our two-spirit ancestors. And, and again, it varied from tribe to tribe. Yeah. yeah. But by and large, um, it, was, it was not difficult to be a two-spirit person, right, in, in, in the culture? I mean, again, I... I, I mean, acceptance-wise? Right. That. It was a different social structure. And again, a, a lot of times we talk about these tribal ways and we sort of talk about them and describe them in a very, um, I, I don't want to say Western mindset, but it's almost like square peg in a round hole kind of thing. This was a tribal role and function. And when you try and look at it through a Western lens, it's like it won't go, it doesn't fit. Um, so it was a different way of living, a different way of life. Well, have they always been accepted? We know historically they were. Right, uh, no, unfortunately. Um, again, the influence of Western religion and colonization um, really did a lot of desecrating. Uh, and so you, have you had to mend that? Yes. Reestablish it? Absolutely, absolutely. And that's what this... Has it been successful? Uh, it's in the process, you know, it, it's in flux. That's what you're um, doing, right? I, th I think, I, you know what, I can't even say that. I, I have seen successes, yes. When you see 
elders who are boarding school survivors come to a two-spirit gathering, a two-spirit event, and do their healing, or at least begin. You know, we don't expect anybody at a two-spirit gathering to walk out the door, you know, and be like, heal, you know, it's over. Right, you right, know, right. I, don't, I don't know that that's a real expectation, but to even come to a gathering and to start that road and to start to walk that road and, and begin your healing, because we all know healing isn't finite. Healing is a, it's a lifetime of getting it, right? You work at it constantly over a, li a lifetime. Yeah, so in those ways, I've seen it be successful. Youth who maybe don't have access to their community all year long and are siloed or isolated, maybe on the reservation where it's not safe to walk in their truth. And they could come to a two-spirit gathering and um, be themselves, have community, not have to explain, have their gender uh, identity and expression affirmed. So I guess it, de it depends how you define success. And in that way, yes, I've seen it be successful. Yeah, yeah. You, you brought up the word boarding schools, and that's what I was getting at. When, when uh, Native Americans no longer had their own, when, when they were so disrupted in this mm -hmm. country. Um, and I'm, I'm just guessing now that the, the acceptance part today uh, has something to do with looking back and realizing that uh, historically yeah. two-spirit people were accepted, correct? Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, we, we know that, 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 that there was this place for us. Right. So the two-spirit movement in a sense sort of predates the LGBTQ movement in the sense that on this land uh, people, I, I always like to say gen, who are gender fluid, gender queer, gender nonconforming, but those people, not only were they accepted, but had a place. And of course, you'll get people, uh, maybe, um, uh, especially in the more Christian influenced areas, who will say, no, this never existed, no, this never happened. But we have proof, we have photographic proof. Um, we ha there's a lot of things that sort of lead us back to go, no, things were, things were good for it two-spirit people before colonization and uh, Western, the influences of, of Western religion also. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about your music a little bit. Sure. Where, all, where, how, where are you at with the career now as far as uh, you've produced, what, how many albums? Uh, two. Two albums? Two studio albums. Yeah. Um, and uh, working on my third. Uh, it's called Killer Queen. <laughs> uh, it's a pop album. Um, it'll be out later this year. Um, and just and now starting to um, produce other artists, and uh, it's it's been a blessing. It's I mean I'm I am, you know, I'm a I'm a little gay boy from uh, the Whitman Housen projects in South Philadelphia. And here you are. And I don't know that anybody ex you know I never expected any of this. So I'm blessed. I'm I'm a really ordinary person who's been blessed to have kind of extraordinary experiences. I'm blessed, very blessed. Um, What's your, who's your audience for your music? Because you, you, you are a pop right. performer. Yeah. Um, is it LGBTQ audience primarily, or you find that, you, that your music is, is uh, prolific on, on the radio, or what? That's a tall order, the word prolific. Um, I, definitely uh, popular among the LGBTQ audiences. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to ever not make music for them. Um, and I, that's my experience. So, you know, I have to be myself, I have to be me. Um, and those, those are who, the people that can identify with my experience. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I have a lot of, actually I have a huge, I guess you could say, sh straight uh, file. Because at the end of the day, I'm a musician and I make music for everyone. Right. It just so happens that I also write about my experiences, um, which happen to be uh, gay or, two-spirit experiences. And so what's your message through your music? Because you say words fail and music speaks. Yeah. I think healing. Healing healing, and love, but healing, I think, there's always something to heal from. You know what I mean? Like, that's why I always say healing isn't finite. You know what I mean? And especially if you have trauma in your pain. We all experience trauma. Everybody has trauma. We've all experienced it to varying degrees and levels. And that trauma, if it's not tended to, can really become a spiritual toxin, so to speak, and block out love and, and happiness. And so I think healing uh, and love, of course, whether it's love for yourself, each other, creator, the world around us. So healing and love, are, they're, they're my top priority. I have uh, a number of notes here. EC2SS. Yes. What is that? Uh, that's the East Coast Two-Spirit Society. Okay. I was blessed enough 
to, I was a board member for two years. Um, and then finally I, I started getting busier and I felt that that seat could be better occupied by someone who could devote the time and the care um, into, that, into that seat. Um, but they do amazing work, um, a lot of healing work um, for our youth and community and they maintain that safe space which is so important um, for two-spirit people you know, our community in general but especially our, uh, our youth. Yeah. Um, with you, I don't know where to, to, to go because there's so much to talk <laughs> about. You, 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 you are involved in the LGBTQ community, obviously, yes, youth rights, HIV, yes, AIDS awareness, yes. domestic violence awareness. Um, how do you focus on all of that, including the two-spirit part of it? I don't know that or I focus so much. I think it is all, it is all connected. Yeah, I have to say, I, th I think it is all connected. And there are things that are community experience. And so I've been blessed enough to have a platform to speak to experiences musically. And I do my best to do that. And you know, artistically in terms of when you do uh, music videos um, and, and things like that, you get the opportunity to speak to certain things. But I think, uh, you know, there's, a, there's an expression if you, if you if you pay attention to life long enough, it'll show you how to live it. So I don't really worry about focusing too much. Life just kind of guides me to where I need to be. And I always pray to, uh, to the creator, the ancestors, and especially the mothers of our people, to be a, a vessel, to say and do the right things, to be you know, of service to our youth and children. And obviously, it's resonating. People you know, are responding yeah. positively. Thank I can't. I, I don't have any complaints. Yeah. Yeah, another hat you wear, or s something else you're you're involved in, is the Sacred Water Crisis yes. in, in uh, Standing Rock, yes, sir. In North Dakota. Talk about that. Um, I mean, it's it's been uh, the whole thing is overwhelming. Um, I was there in November. I went with the American Indian Community House um, of New York, and I have to give a huge uh, shout out to them to the American Indian Community House. Um, they're, they're all we have, so to speak, in terms of a, a native organization in New York. Um, they've been serving, uh, we have the largest concentration of urban Indians in New York, and they've been serving our community for almost 50 years now. I think next year will be 50 years. Um, and so we went out, uh, we took some youth and some relief supplies, and we went out, um, and you realize very quickly it was a war zone. Um, and it was diff a lot of it was difficult. It was difficult to see people in pain. It was difficult to see the continuation of genocide. Well, for folks who aren't mm -hmm. uh, familiar with, with the issues, uh, share that and then let's go on with what you were So the, 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 the DAPL pipeline is running under the Cannonball River. Um, and when it breaks, it will contaminate the, the water. Mm -hmm. um, there's no, once you mess up, the, the, there's no take two on that. You know what I mean? Like we all need, we all need water. Um, to, every living thing needs water. And um, it's also running through sacred, gr sacred ground out there. Um, and they found, uh, to my understanding, um, uh, bodies that were buried there. So now they're, they're, they're digging up burial ground and just all the things that are ignored in the plight of uh, Native people that has been ignored or told that it's not important enough for them to stop. Mm -hmm. um, and this process has been very, it's been hurtful. Um, you say it's a war zone. Yeah. The, uh, the police presence that was there, um, obviously the village, is, it's not, the camp isn't there anymore. Um, but the police presence was very uh, intimidating. There's drones flying overhead, helicopters flying overhead constantly. Uh, when I was there, um, at a, there was an action that day. One of the elver, elders was almost run over by a Dapple truck. Um, I don't know if, uh, hmm. there's, I, I, will, I won't say some things because I don't want to, um, I don't want to give misinformation or. Uh, Greg. Right. Yeah, there was a lot of upsetting things that, that happened that day that I'm not sure that I could pinpoint blame for in a sense where Dapple is concerned. But um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult. It's hard. And then the, the water protectors returned from an action who got pepper sprayed, who was, uh, you know, there's so many of those videos where they were standing there in prayer and they're using uh, concussion grenades and, and the, you see them turn the, the fire hoses. On the, and I mean, 
it, it, if you've ever been there, it's freezing. At night, it is freezing, and they're hosing these people down, purposely hoping that they'll get hypothermia, and that you know they'd be out of their way, so to speak, so that they can continue with their work. So it was a very, uh, it was it was hard. I was glad that we went, and it was good that we went, but it, it, was, it was difficult. It was upsetting. Yeah. Where do you see the ultimate resolution of that headed? I think the United States has the respect treaties, number one. Um, where do I see it heading in terms of right now with everything? Yeah. Or I, I think I, I saw recently, and I haven't gotten the chance to read into it further, that um, the powers that be found that this violates uh, certain things or certain rights. So I, I don't know what's going to happen after that. I don't know that I have an answer to that. Can they pull out? Can they stop? Uh, how do you say? construction on it, can mm -hmm. they remove it? You know, these are a lot of things that are sort of up in the air questions and, and I don't have the answer to those things. But what I did see happen was a community come together. Um, there hadn't been that many tribes, intertribally together. You know, it, when you would go in, you would see the row of flags, all the different tribal flags and the Two-Spirit Nation was there and the rainbow flag was there. We were part of that, um, of that movement and uh, on a I talked about in the presentation, a cold November morning, the Two-Spirit Camp built a water pier out into the river so that the women and elders could have a place to do the water ceremony the next day. And so that's part of our living culture is a Two-Spirit culture, you know what I mean? That's something that I was blessed enough to witness and that, sh I don't, you know, it's something we have to remember and forget. And we're an oral tradition uh, as Native people, so that, that's something that should be part of that, that the Two-Spirit Nation Camp built that water pier for that to, to happen. So there was, you know, I believe good things can come from bad. So things like that and the pulling together and the healing, those were good things that, that were coming out of that really dreadful situation. What's next for you, Tony? For me, um, I, again, I'm working on this third album, releasing the album. Um, I will be traveling with a show uh, called Don't Feed the Indians uh, <laughs> by uh, Muriel Miguel, who's a brilliant native director in New York City. Is it a play? It's a play. Um, and that's later uh, in the fall, winter time. Um, a musical or? There's, I do singing in it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you would call it a musical per se. I think it's more or less a straight play that has some, some song and dance yeah. in it. But you know, if you're, usually if you're calling on me, it's because you want to utilize, you sure. need a singer or something. You know, it's the sure. effect of what I can do. Um, and uh, God willing, I'll, I'll tour with, with this new album nationally as well. Very good. I hope. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's been a pleasure. Been um, a pleasure. Any final thoughts you'd like to share with our, our viewers before we close? Oh, gosh. Just uh, keep loving on each other. Look out for each other. Take care of each other. Don't forget to take care of your spirit. Remember to heal. Uh, it's something that we get fooled out of thinking that we have the option to choose. And it's important that we choose to heal because then that in turn affects how we deal with each other and our ability to love each other. Beautifully put. Thank you, Tony. Thank you. Appreciate my pleasure. It very Thank, much. You. Thank you. Thank you for being with us again on Metro and more. Our goal is to better acquaint you with the mission, the leadership, and the reach of the college. I'm Kent Pavelka for Metropolitan Community College. If you have comments or questions about the program, please email us at metrovision at mccneb.edu. Thanks for watching. This has been a Metrovision production produced by Metropolitan Community College.